Welcome to another Vala tutorial. In this video we're going to take a look on how to actually write this code in an object-oriented programming way, because Vala by default is an object-oriented language. You could think that, okay, now we have our main and it gets triggered, we could continue writing everything inside this method, but it's not really clean, it's not really scalable, it's hard to maintain, especially if you have like a big application having everything inside the main method, it's not really doable, it's something you should totally avoid it. So let's take a look on how to refactor this code to use objects and see how Vala interacts and handles with classes, methods, constructors, and so on. So first, let's comment these out here because I want to keep it I'm gonna copy paste a bunch of stuff from it and the first thing that we need to do we need to create a class so we need to specify the attribute of this class by default it should be a class should be public if we want to tap it then I'm gonna call it test but you can call it however you want and by default this is not enough because Vala needs to extend a class. If we're not generating something from scratch, we need to extend whatever class we're gonna implement in our own class. And because we're using GTK and we wanna build an application, we need to extend the gtk.application class. And this column here that we're using is basically, if you know a bit of PHP, uh, it's like writing extends to just extend another class, but of course in Vala we use the column. Once again, if we tap the Vala doc documentation, we can see how this extending of classes works in GTK or in another application built in Vala. If you see here, the GTK application class that we're using is extending the glib application and also is extending these other three classes, the glib action group, object, and action map. So this is the clarification or the explanation of what we're doing in our code. We are generating a new class that is extending this other class. And this is really important because whenever we need to create a new class that has some specific functionalities or we want to uh, maybe tweak or update some default classes or methods of GTK, we can create a class that extends pre-existing class that we want to implement. So whenever we create a new class in Vala, automatically two methods get treated. And this can be kind of confusing because by default in uh, object-oriented programming, when you initialize a new class, the usual construct or constructor, it depends on the programming language that you're using, gets triggered. This happens also in Vala, but not just this constructor. We have also another constructor called the class object constructor that gets triggered. So we can have something like public, then the name of the class itself, with the regular brackets and then the curly brackets. So whenever this class gets initialized, both the public constructor and the constructor gets triggered on the first time. The difference between these two, it's really, really simple. So if for example, the public class constructor uh, prints something, so print F and we have like, hello. And then instead when the constructor gets triggered, we print F there, something like that. If for example, we generate a new variable called uh, variable test and inside this test, we initialize the new test class. So a new instance of the test class. And then after we recreate a new instance of the same test class, so we basically initialize the test class twice. The first time that it's initialized, we're gonna have an output of hello and then there. But the second time that we initialize, we're gonna get just the there. So that's the main difference between these two constructors. The class constructor that gets triggered only the first time that the class initialized while the program is running. If the same class gets initialized twice, the first constructor class doesn't get triggered, doesn't get initialized, but only the constructor or whatever other method we can put in it. So this is the main difference between the two different constructors that we have here in Vala. Let's delete this and let's start actually writing our class. So let's delete the constructor because we're not gonna use it. Let's give it a little bit of space so it's more readable. First, the public test needs an object because we initialize the GTK application. If we check the documentation, whenever we tap the creation method of the GTK application, 
this GTK application expects an application ID and an application flag. We need to define these two attributes inside our code. So we can do it by tapping the object, the glib object of the same class, its very own class, and put a semicolon at the end. And inside here, we can specify the application ID. Then needs to be a unique ID. And by convention, it's recommended also from the elementary guideline for the developer's guideline. You need to put a unique name that combines your GitHub URL, like reverse GitHub URL, plus the name of your application. So in my case, it's going to be com dot github dot alicad that it's my username and then the name of my application in our case in my case is test this assures that it doesn't matter how generic the name of your application is you will never have an application id that already exists in the system because the uh, prefix like the unique url of your github account it's impossible to have the same username on github and then the second attribute that the GTK application needs is the flags. And the flags is an attribute that specified, basically tells the application how to behave. And if you don't know what to write here, just check the documentation once again. In the application, we need the flags and is expecting the application flags from glib. So if we click here, you know that flags is used to define the behavior of our application and all the options that these application flags accepts are here. We can specify that this application has a default or should run as a service or don't try to become the primary instance or so on. Like we can change the behavior of our application the first time it gets triggered. By default, let's put as a flags none. And the way of writing these, it's basically we need to respect the hierarchy of this declaration. And if we click on this declaration flags none, the hierarchy is actually if you're super confused, if you don't know how to write it, it's actually a combination of the class, the method, and the attribute. So we need to write glib application flag flags none. So the flags is glib dot application flags dot flags underscore none all uppercase and once again also this hierarchy here it's luckily and super handy in the url so we can potentially copy the url and remove the html and basically copy the name of the page glib application flags flags none is exactly what we need to write in our flags here another thing that we could do to clean it up a little bit since glib the g library is by default inside every vala application we don't need to package it like it was a gtk library like the GDK widget, we can completely avoid to specify the name of the master class because automatically everything is based on glib or like the g object, everything comes from there. So we don't need to specify this. And this keeps our application kind of cleaner because we know it whenever we have this type of names, it just belongs to glib. But for every other package for every other library, it's always better to specify the name of the library class. Uh, you can leave glib if, if you want, it doesn't matter, but as a convention, we can also avoid it. Fantastic. Now that whenever we create a new test class, the object is defined, we can do something during the activation. And this GTK application has a built-in method called activate. And during activate, we can do something, but because this method is already present in the GTK application, we need to override it. So we have to specify override this method. And also because Vala is a typed language, we need to specify what kind of method is this? This is a protected method. And what value is returning this method? Nothing, it's a void method. Now inside this activate method that automatically gets triggered whenever a new GTK application get instantiated, we can basically copy all the things that we need to generate a new window. So we copy it and we paste it here. Let's uncomment out, indent it properly. We're creating a new window, but instead of creating a new window, let's use an extended class of the window. So if we search, for example, in Validoc GTK window, we have it here. We scroll down, we're going to have a list here before the declaration of the contents and properties and all the generation methods. We're going to have a list here of all known subclasses. The subclasses are basically classes that extend the base class. So we're looking for something like the application window that is right here. And 
As the description says, the application Windows is a Windows subclass that offers some extra functionalities for better integration with application features. And as we see in the example here, basically what we're building, the application window needs something. We're passing this, this. So if we scroll down in the application window creation method, this is what we're calling here. It needs to be passed the actual application itself and it needs to be the GTK application class or the instance of this class. So if we access our code, we can change this to GTK application window and we need to pass the instance of the application that is this very own class. So test is extending the application. This, so the scope variable, this of the class, it's basically the test itself. So we're passing test inside the application window. This is really similar to PHP, don't you think? So now that we're generating a new application window, we can set the title. We can avoid the board the width. We don't want to set it. It's kind of useless. Uh, window position is fine. Set default size. We want to remove the destroy connection because we don't need to tap the GTK main quit. Automatically a GTK application will handle the destruction of the window. Need to specify window show hole to make it visible. Otherwise it won't be visible and we're going to have a hard time. Perfect. Now that we declare the activation method, we can rebuild the main method that gets called whenever the GTK application is triggered. So once again, we can specify public static method that returns an integer called main. And inside the main, once again, we can pass a string, an array of string that's called arguments. And inside here, we can just do a couple of things. First, let's define a variable that is going to initialize our test class. And then we can return the test class but we're going to tap the run method inside the test class and we're going to pass all the arguments that we have inside here that we're getting from the main method. So basically what we're doing here, we're doing exactly what we were doing before. Instead of returning manually zero, we are returning the result of the run method. This run method we didn't define, but it comes automatically from the GTK application. We can use it because we don't need to redeclare. We're extending this class so we can tap the methods that belong to that class. And by saying running automatically, we're passing all the arguments if we have any argument and we're returning whatever value this run method returns. So if something goes wrong, it returns negative one, so the application encounters a problem. Otherwise, if it returns zero, everything went smoothly and our application works. Perfect. So we can delete these and we built our first application in object-oriented programming with the bare minimum to make it work. So let's see if it actually works. Let's open the terminal and let's run once again our compiler, valak package gtk3 and test.vala. Boom, it compiled, we have our test and we can run our test application. There you go, we have it here. And this is my test application. Beautiful. It's using the GTK application and the application window. It looks pretty fantastic. Um, in the previous tutorial, a couple of you wrote like, hey, why if you specify the GTK window position center, it's appearing here? Well, simply because this that you're seeing is a quarter of my screen. I have a 4K monitor and the center of my monitor is actually here. So the application, it's opening in the proper position. I'm just recording a quarter of my screen. But there you go. This is like the first overview of how Vala handles object-oriented programming, how it handles the initialization and generation of a new class, how to extend it, what is the difference between a public class constructor and the built-in constructor of the same class. Now our code is way cleaner. It's separated by class. If we want to generate another class, for example, if we want to create a private method that returns void called like build window, we can call it here and we can move all these window stuff inside this method and in the activation method we can call build window method. Let's take a look if it works. Oh, typo. Sorry. Let's run it again. 
perfect it works and it's still the same we have our application here so as you can see here Vala doesn't really need if you come from PHP or another object oriented program it doesn't really need to specify hey this tap the build window from this method automatically if we don't specify anything Vala knows to look for this method inside this very own class so this is pretty fantastic. So it's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna see how to split this class in multiple classes and start to actually make our very own application a little bit more complex and scalable and extendable for the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to tackle some specific options, some specific features, and if you like how this tutorial series is going. Until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!